Um, do you want me to just call you Art? Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. You don't you don't have to do the whole art of stashy. Just art's just yeah. fine. Yeah. I'll just call you Art. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, thought, I thought about doxing myself because I went to Bitmain and doxed myself there. But and you know, there's crazies. It's funny. I, I saw your uh, talking with mine some ten about you know if I could go back, I wouldn't dox myself. And I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely. Um, I definitely suggest not doxing yourself as an individual. What I was doing before this was not anything with crypto. So um, it wasn't like I was expecting to be, I guess, one, as popular as I ended up getting, right? And two, um, being in uh, somewhat of a financial sector, right? So um, between those two things, I was like, dang, I kind of jacked up. Before this, I was just like reviewing GPU performance, like, I don't know, as an IT nerd, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. I'm, I'm in tech myself. I get I get being a nerd. I, I think you have to have a passion for this stuff to deal with it on a long-term basis. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're really going to – I want to get the elephant out of the – or the elephant in the room addressed first – and then I want to talk to you about uh, glyphs. But first, before we get into that, could you tell everybody who you are, what you do for Radiant, and where they can contact you on socials? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I go by the artist Satoshi. Uh, people just call me Art. Um, I've uh, been um, in crypto for, gosh, I probably read the white paper. I think in 2011, so just a couple of years after, um, you know, when Bitcoin was still new. And um, I, I remember seeing it, at, gosh, I think it's about $20 the first time I saw it. And then it went to 200 and I thought, oh, man, this is way too expensive to get into it. And uh, of course, now we look back at that and just laugh. Right. Um, but but I was always inspired by, you know, Satoshi's writings, the white paper and, and the promise of the technology. So, um, been in crypto and kind of seen the evolution of it. And, um, I heard about Radiant about two months after it started and joined the the discord and, uh, found a, a community that, um, the, the creator had left and it was just kind of a drift and there was this feeling that it might have been, you know, I'll, I'll use the term rugged, you know, um, but, uh, it, I, <clears throat> I had known him from other projects and so reached out and literally kind of gave him the the run through of like, ah, you know, you, you, what'd you do, blah, 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 you know, give him shit really. And uh, it was interesting, like how he came back and said, no, I tried to create something because Bitcoin is broken. It's, it's ossified. It's never going to change the way it is now. It's captured by banks and we know what it is. It's the treasury bond and, and Bitcoin is you know always going to be number one. It's always going to be the first digital asset and the first successful digital asset, asset, I should say, because there were ones before it. But it's the one that really solved um, you know, proof of work and how it works and mining and all those different things that, that need to work together to create the systems that, that we see that have been successful. And so um, I found it interesting because I've always you know, been just a holder of coins and never actually part of a community where I could have any effect on the outcome or how the technology progresses. And so I kind of jumped into Radiant, um, just seeing what I could bring to it. Um, I had no title, no role. I was just a community member. And um, just over time, I, I guess, got more credibility, or, you know, social credibility, I guess you'd call it. And um, I've really just been a community member and into individual contributor. I'm not a dev. Um, I don't do any of the coding. I am um, an admin of the Discord. I created uh, the Reddit, uh, which you can definitely use more traffic on. Uh, on. Um, on Twitter, I'm at the artist Satoshi, and uh, I definitely recommend anyone who's interested in Radiant join the Discord because that's where we have most of our communication and talk and really work out, you know, what is Radiant and what will it be and what is the future for it. And it really is a truly decentralized project, you know, even though um, I'm an admin of the Discord, that doesn't mean I have any extra veto power over Radiant than, than you do or anyone else. Um, anyone can run a node, <clears throat> 
Um, you know, mining, as we'll talk about with the entity, is a little bit uh, tricky right now. Uh, we definitely want that opened up and want ASIC so that way everyone can mine. But it was always designed to be ASIC friendly so that way you can have dedicated hardware that increases the security of it. And um, so this, you know, is I think a rough patch for for that topic, but I really see an incredibly bright future for Radiant because it's amazing technology. It is at its core just Bitcoin with some slight modifications and um, a community and people who are behind it that want to see um, a lot of the original peer-to-peer -peer cash and opcodes that Satoshi had created. Um, now. Of course, Satoshi might have limited some of those because it was new. He didn't um, know exactly what the effects would be. Um, and I think that limiting nature has kind of, as after he left, has, has really taken hold. And um, it is very powerful technology that he created. Uh, SPV that was in the original Bitcoin white paper was never realized in BTC and Bitcoin. And so, I mean, that's something that was he originally wrote about and it has never come to fruition. And we have it active right now in Radiant. So you can do zero confirmation track uh, transactions. You see it in Glyph, I'm sure, you know, when you send transactions and, and mine them and you're immediately in your wallet. Of course, they do get processed into blocks. Um, has a shorter block time at five minutes. Um, but uh, there's a few other little changes, more opcodes enabled and induction proofs that uh, really uh, fix the back to Genesis problem, which is basically as a blockchain grows, it becomes very hard to find all of the transactions and transaction history in an in indexer. And so um, the back to Genesis, uh, the induction proofs very simply is just like putting a DNA stamp on a transaction. So that way you can find it, the needle in the haystack, just by picking up that DNA. So um, those small little changes really open it up so we can do amazing things. And I really think of Radiant as not a competitor to Bitcoin, but um, you know the silver to its gold, you mix silver and gold, you get Electrum. It's not something that should be competing against each other. It's something that um, can complement each other. Uh, just today, I was talking with someone about um, using uh, hash locked uh, you know, proofs so that way we can make Bitcoin, be able to actually truly make Radiant a layer two for Bitcoin transactions. So you can transact cheaper, faster, and then have that you know reflected on the Bitcoin blockchain. So really i think we're just getting started with the technology and what it can do and you see some of the potential with glyphs and i highly recommend everybody check it out check out the discord um, come and join us we're getting new people all the time just today i saw a new website popped up uh, radiantblockchain.xyz it's an awesome website um i i believe a, a gentleman that goes by the name of uh, at uh, bitconstruct on uh, twitter um created it um, and uh, just love that. I, I love all the community involvement. Um, there's no paid positions. I'm not paid. No one else is. Um, we never never had a anything like that or even a budget um, <laughs> to say. So it truly is um, at its core a community project. Now, I know it's hard to believe that nowadays because crypto has become you know, what it's become with so much VC influence and uh, money and, you know, why are people doing it? There has to be some ulterior motive. Um, but uh, I think, as I told you earlier, I'm, I'm a nerd at heart. This is a passion project for me. I have my day job. I, I have, you know, um, my regular gig, but this is uh, something that I truly love to do. Cool. So um, I'll put all of the links to the socials, the Discord, I guess the new website you mentioned at .xyz down in the description below for everybody to check out if you guys want to check that out later. Um, I have to kind of go, I guess, a little bit closer to the beginning of some of the things you said. And one was the issue of, you know, Bitcoin being captured by banks. I mean, a lot of that too, though... <laughs> we could say was captured by Bitmain and ASICs. And that's really going to lead us into this discussion. Um, even at the Bitcoin conference 2024, there are some pretty um, big names coming out and talking about the issue with decentralization on the mining side of things and ASICs. And that's, I know from a certain perspective, 
we're we're not going to ever like you and I will never agree on ASICs versus a more decentralized hardware that's consumer available like CPU and GPU. But I, I found it curious that you bring up Bitcoin and some of the problems with Bitcoin and it felt it feels like it's a little glossed over on the mining side of capture from Bitmain. I mean, do you think that there's an issue there or do you think that there's absolutely zero issues there or is it somewhere in between? No, I mean, from a, a like a fundamental kind of um, standpoint, yes, you, you do want to have more competition. Um, Bitmain definitely is the the gorilla in the mining space, especially even in, in BTC. Um, if you add up their pools, uh, I, th I think I saw a number that 96% of all Bitcoin blocks are mined on Bit Bitmain equipment. Um, it's not just the pools that they control, which probably go over 50%. Um, not that I believe that that is a worry as far as... Um, them doing a 51% attack, it is in their interest to make sure Bitcoin is successful because of the nature of how Bitcoin was developed by Satoshi. Even an attacker becomes a uh, an owner by the coins they generate. And so it becomes their best interest to make sure that the blockchain succeeds and, and then, you know, they, they get those rewards. It's not just the hardware sales, um, but I do agree with you, you know, from a fundamental standpoint, there probably should be uh, more competition, you know, and I would welcome other companies, you know, coming in um, to either Radiant or, you know, um, Bitcoin. It becomes though a proof of work issue you know who is able to develop the best chips who is able to um, create the the lowest power consumption and greatest production it's uh it becomes a fundamental kind of economic issue at that point i think it at some point it does become black and white just like how you do numbers and check different cards versus other cards i would also argue that even in the gpu space um nvidia you know, is the bit main of its industry. And yes, there's AMD. I mean, yeah, I guess you can maybe say Intel used to be in the race, you know, barely at this point. Um, but I don't think anyone, you know, uh, says that NVIDIA isn't the dominant force in the GPU industry, and especially going into AI. You know, they are the bit main of that um, that industry at the moment. So it's, it's an interesting thing. Um, you know, Team Green, Team Red, if you only have two teams, um, that's not, you know, duopoly is not necessarily distributed either. So um, I do agree with you that, you know, the price of ASICs uh, could come down so that way they're more consumer friendly. Um, having home miners that don't consume incredible amounts of power and need tons of, uh, you know, um, all of the extra stuff that goes with running, you know, all those machines um, would definitely be great. Satoshi did say that he envisioned that everything would be on server farms if you go back and look at some of his messages with people and um you know i i can't read his thoughts or know you know what his dreams were but um it was something that, that he kind of put out there uh but i agree with you that as distributed as possible is incredibly important i think also who controls or can make the, who um, can call out, I guess, the node software and the block headers. I mean, there's all kinds of other things besides the proof of work, the hashing that also matter as far as distributed networks. There are many that may be distributed in hash, but if there are a few validators or there's only a few people that can do code commits, there's other forms of centralization that have to be looked at as well and, and dealt with too. Um, but I agree with you, it's not a black or white issue. And um, I will say, uh, I wish there was more time with just GPUs, but somebody saw an opportunity and um, and they jumped on it. So that's where we are. Well, and that is, we can talk about the evolution of blockchains and why Bitcoin's evolution into ASICs 
is a lot better for the ecosystem than what we're currently seeing with layer one proof of work uh, options like Radiant, Caspa, and Alephium off the top of my head where the distribution on the Bitcoin side of things had already been pretty well established prior to the inception of ASICs. Um, whereas, you know, when we're talking about heavily accelerated um emission schedules with early onset ASICs, I think that it can cause some potential issues with uh, control over the volume of the network, uh, which I think is the primary concern that's coming up with Radiant right now. But I did want to push back a little bit on the GPU side of things because it's not just that it's available on GPUs and GPUs only have two manufacturers. The other issue that you have to consider there um, is, is the availability to the consumer. I know you did mention price, so I appreciate that. That is definitely a big portion of it is the price. The reason the availability to the consumer and the plethora of additional workloads that can be done on the particular hardware, like a CPU or GPU, means that the price is regulated not purely by the price of the crypto that it is mining, um, which means that you have a more fair and honest um, market for that hardware, uh, whereas opposed to, and yes, it can, things can get out of control like we saw with the ETH days and it drives the price of the GPUs through the roof. But even at that phase, we weren't looking at bomb cost disparity like we're seeing with the KS KS5s, KS3s, KS1s on Casper, right? You know that the bomb cost is not near the $60,000 price tag that these things are coming out at. And so you're getting price gouging from these uh, companies. And there's frankly, there's nothing you can do about it because they control the entire market, including the actual price of the crypto that they're mining. Um, and, and I think when we look at what's going on with the entity on Radiant, I think... Um, my first question I, that I really wanted to get back to, and then we're going to go into this, is, is what does decentralization mean to you? Like, obviously, you mentioned nodes. Uh, there, There's hash power, there's nodes, um, and then there's also uh, actual, you know, volume of the, of the coin and the tokens themselves. Uh, do you consider all of those things to be vital within decentralization? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, completely agree with that. Um, a couple of you know things that we just talked about. I mean, fifty percent of the coins, around fifty percent, were mined with GPUs um, and FPGAs. So you also have to put that out there. The FPGAs were definitely more efficient than the GPUs. You know, before ASICs came on, and and still. Um, so it it wasn't just a GPU game and and FPGAs. You know, I don't hear people really crying that they were more efficient, they're not very readily available, they're not as much consumer grade hardware, um, where we hear that, you know, loud and clear with ASICs. So, um, you know, not not saying that that's hypocrisy, but it's something that I've noticed is is very different because I don't have any FPGAs. I was just- Well, I push back on the FPGA market quite a bit. I think that it is um, their marketing or their- their strategy, the FPGA farm strategies are, are very scummy, uh, including the people that are selling them and the people that are developing the bit streams. Um, it is, they are, uh, they are intentionally set out to capture the volume of the cryptocurrency and control the price of it. And the only time when they sell them is similar to what a lot of ASIC companies do is after they've met their economic goals. Yeah, no, and... I, yeah, I, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, uh, so, you know, I, at least we got about 50%. We, uh, Radiant hasn't had the accelerated distribution that a lot of other networks had or pre-mine or pre-sales that some other networks have had as well. Um, I know there was just an unlock for a lithium. And I met some people that are you know, really nice and amazing from Elysium, um at a conference. And so I have nothing you know, bad to say against them or Casper or anyone, but um, you know, long tail of security budget does matter. It's not just this moment in time, but you have to be planning for five, 10, 
you know, 20 years down the road, will there be coins still being mined? And what will the security budget be if you are making a longstanding project that is supposed to actually accomplish something in my mind? So, you know, that that's a difference of opinion. I'm sure I could argue that with other people all day, but um, I, I think there is an economic model that uh, has to be followed. Now, Radiant is twice um, Bitcoin with a two-year halving, so we will eventually catch up to Bitcoin, but that isn't until um, I think it's something like 20 years from now um, around there that that happens. So uh, it's it's got a long runway with a good security budget uh, available, I believe, in the future. And of course, that really, for me, what matters is, is it going to be useful? Uh, will we be able to actually use this for something? Uh, I, I don't really focus on the price of the coin too much. I think people might not like that. I've never told anyone to ever buy it, even though I, of course, have myself and mined it. Um, but, uh, you know, to each their own. Um, I'm in the U.S. like you, so I also need to uh, make sure to, you know, cover bases since legalities and everything are still up in the air. And of course, there's an election going on and all that. It's a big talk right now. But um, I have really focused on the technology and trying to make sure that it becomes useful. So our NFT standards and the token standards and getting Glyph up and running like we are now, um, making sure that Radiant can actually be a viable um, layer two for uh, Bitcoin in the future. Um, those are things that that I focus on, and and also just building up and maintaining the community because I think you know really a coin, its value is in the people that use it and the people that are behind it and push it. And, and just as a technology by itself, this stuff is useless. It really helps con connect people and connect humanity um, as its greater goal. It can be just money, but it can also be, as we know, with DeFi, Web3, gaming, social, so many different aspects it can be used, just like the Internet is. And when the Internet was first developed, people couldn't imagine the things we're doing now, that we're you know, having a video conference and talking about all these crazy things we're talking about. And that's some of the potential that I think is just starting to be unlocked um, with blockchains. And Unfortunately, a lot of the innovation has happened in proof of stake uh, systems. Uh, so Sol, you know, has been very, very popular right now, Solana. And um, I think 84% of Solana is held in something like a thousand wallets. So, I mean, it, there's this incredible centralization in other systems and people just accept it as a fact. It's you know, something that I, I push back against. And um, and I'll say right now, too, I mean, you know, to the entity and everyone else or any other ASIC manufacturers out there, I've reached out to Bitbain, of course, and met them at their conference and uh, Ice River and Goldshell and anyone else that wants to create competing hard hardware, we want it as soon as possible. And I think one thing that the uproar about all of this proved is that there is a huge demand from miners and community members that want to have distribution of this hardware. So that way we can have distributed mining and um, people can be involved and get coins and all the things that go with that. Well, you talk about community and a large part of the community in early days of any chain is the miners themselves. So if you've just cut it all the way down to a single miner, well, there goes a ton of your community. And and that's just the way it, it ends up being and something that should be considered when you're talking about community and the relationship to individuals that participate within it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I think, you know, and, and a lot of other miners know, though, GPU miners, that um, it is quite mercenary. Not everyone stays on coins that become unprofitable. In fact, typically, you'll switch to more profitable coins and possibly sell those off and buy the ones that you prefer. You know, so I don't think that GPU mining is necessarily in the long run a better strategy for long-term security of a chain, um, especially as price and emissions change. That changes calculus for um, GPU miners as energy costs change and price of, of new GPUs and everything else. So I think it's it's arguing almost kind of apples and oranges versus a pineapple. And you know, we like you said, we may never totally agree on this. And um, I I will say I did not wish for ASICs to come online as quickly as they did. But like I said, somebody saw an opportunity. And um, even though I've been in contact with the entity, I have no clue who they are. 
to right to even right now. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that we find out sooner rather than later, um, and we get, like I said, get those machines online. Um, but um, that the only thing I can do to make that happen is to continue working on the technology and building the community and pushing this forward so that way that hardware can be released. Well, when difficulty comes down, more people will stay on it. It's not like GPU miners all jump off of a single cryptocurrency project. Um, so I'm not necessarily sure that that's true. I've known a lot of GPU miners that have been on Ergo and not left since the ETH merge. Um, and I think that that balance itself out more based off of competition within the market, which should be a driving factor in the decisions that developers make when they're developing a coin to attract you know, security to their project as a fo as opposed to forcing people into pr to participating in their network by regulating them to a single algorithm based off of the an application specific integrated circuit. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. Um, the, <clears throat> I guess the best way I can put it is that the creator of the coin did express that they never they wanted the protocol to be fixed, and the reason for that, including the algo, is, and that ASICs were an eventuality um, from the very beginning, and uh, the. <sighs> I mean, I guess the, the reason that ASICs long-term are good is because they cannot switch. There is a, sink, a sunk cost. For yeah, but they can turn yeah. off and it creates more e-waste. So it's worse for the environment and you just end up having people turn it off. Yeah, all GPUs eventually are obsolete. You know, uh, I think, you know, that that's the entire industry. So you know, we could talk about recycling or other things that mitigate those those eventualities but, but if uh, it becomes unprofitable asics just turn off i mean at the end of the day it's not any different yeah like, no, like no. look at look at what happened with kadena right like it's not like oh they're just going to stay on and you're going to maintain the same level of security when they're mining at a loss that's just not the way it works yeah no and and like you said you know the difficulty will come down as as that happens and then you'll have at least some that will stay on that provide a, but, a that, decent but do you understand why i don't think that argument is a good one because it's the same it's the same result regardless the only thing that happens is the investor within into that hardware made a bad decision that's the only yeah. difference no, no, I, I completely understand, and, and I agree with you to, to a large respect. The alternative, though, is that you end up picking good hash over bad hash, and you have to decide. There has to be a centralized decision of what is good hash, what is bad hash, what is good proof of work, what is bad proof of work. And like I said, this was not designed, at least from my point of view, to be something that was changed. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If anybody, Radiant is open source, MIT, if you want to fork it and change the algo and create some new coin that's GPU mineable, I would totally, you know. Yeah, but I think the community is that. concerned about it because the community cares about Radiant. Yeah, well, I mean, then... So that's like, I mean, like, because I hear the same arguments from all developers and, and community members across, you know, both Caspa, Lithium, now Radiant. I've had this conversation uh, way too many times. And it's like, well, if you don't like it, fork it and move on. And it's like, well, you just said you cared about community. Well, it's clear you don't give a fuck about the community because when the community brings up concerns, you're like, well, fuck you, move on. Like, that's... I just, I, I'm kind of getting fed up with that answer. And I think like yeah. at this point, this is the third or fourth time I've heard it. And it's frustrating because as community members that are miners, early miners that help set up your project and, and push to mine it and share it with the world and, and take it seriously. And then we see an entity come online that controls hundred percent of the hash rate. And we're like, this doesn't look good. And now the answer is, well, if you don't like it, fork it and make your own, like, and then the, do you see what I'm saying? Like you, you realize how frustrating to the community that is? Yeah, no, I, I get your point of view. Um, but I think it's frustrating to GPU miners 
you specifically, right? If this is your business, yeah. then you, I can see that well, it's frustrating. Then we have to then we have to go into the question of you. You don't think it's it's frustrating to the people that invest in Radiant that now all the emissions are going to a single entity? Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not happy with the situation, and I want the machines out as soon as possible. But I can't roll back the clock, and it's not as a fuck you to anyone, you know that. I personally don't agree with an algo change. It's that I can make my own decisions and other people can make their own decisions and should never be forced by anyone else's economic or political or whatever decisions to, to do anything. So um, I know, and I've had conversations with other people that I consider kind of core community, if you want to put it that way, people have been around for two years that have actually worked on this thing when no one else was here that, they wouldn't want to be part of that project either. So I I don't think that there is enough um, people to actually continue a project that does that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong and I would love to see that. And like I say, I would support it completely. It's just not something I'm interested in and I shouldn't be forced to do that either. That's just not capitalism either. I didn't say anything about capitalism. That would be a discussion about economics and society, but... We're we're just talking about specifically your this community talk, and as it pertains to essentially this this idea that community is important, but if communities have concerns, it's like go fork another project. Like it's just weird. Like I don't those back to back seems like a contradiction to me. But let's move on because I had a question surrounding when. The initial post came out from the Radiant Community Twitter, um, and I read it. I had quoted and retweeted, and I was upset because it sounded to me like the devs were in communication with the entity that had put all of the hash rate onto the network. And uh, I believe you had replied, you corrected me and said that you guys don't know who they are. Um, and and so I guess I want to clarify that Um if you don't know who they are, um, what is the communication methods that you are utilizing to communicate with them at this time? Um, so myself and one other admin have uh, had communication with them, and it's through um, a chat, and uh, I do not know their identity. Um, I have inquired. Um, we have straight asked that they release machines as soon as possible. And um, there, it's not like we've had long conversations with each other or anything, but there has been at least communication that was done. And really, most importantly, to make sure that there was no 51% uh, concerns. Um, if we thought that the security of the network was uh, at risk, then we would definitely consider um, an algo change. So I'm not saying that that's totally off the table. If there was a security concern, it would be. But choosing which hash is good and which hash is bad um, when no no protocol rules have been violated is a different line. But to a, a bad hacker could hack one of the pools and implement a 51% attack through there. So there still is a security concern regardless of if the entity's intentions are good or not, right? Um, yes. I mean, we have good contact with the, the pools that we work with. And uh, I, you know, have faith in their their security and their procedures for that kind of stuff. But absolutely, you know, that's a it's definitely a concern, and I would like that spread out further if possible. Um, but so, you, we all we also only have so much power in this, and really, it's more we've made asks and they have responded. So um, that's how, how I can yeah. Say. So that was going to be the the follow up question was how do you know that the people you're communicating with are responsible for the current hash rate on Humpool and Viper? Well, um, besides, uh, I guess the donations would be the number one way that you can tell. We're getting 5% or so of the daily coin um, emissions um, put into the Radiant Community um, donation. And that was not an an ask from us that was um, something that they um, offered to do to help the coin be successful. And even with them saying that, I basically said that to me, the machines being publicly released is more important 
but you know of course thank you because we've never ever had a budget so it will help out tremendously so we can have hackathons and push for things that we've never ever been able to do before without a budget yeah and that was how i guess if we look at the math there um and it was 10 percent from uh going through viper uh pool um, and then 5% of the total daily volume or, or total daily uh, mind volume. There we go. That went to, that is going to you all. It's suffice to say that currently they control near 100% of the hash rate on the network. Yeah, it's about 98, 99% depends on how much is on Wooly Pooly at the or smaller pools, you know, at the time. But um, yes, it is it is far too high. I do agree with you on that. So um, what oh, I what is what happened? What is their economic goal? Do you have any idea? Yeah, um, they were very clear, um, as as many um, uh, Eastern, um, you know, Asian people are. Uh, that this is uh, this is business for them. They they are in it to um, to in the long run, you know, make money. And uh, I, I well, was they there? Would be, a, they they is, would be lying, you know, if they said anything else. So is I mean, there? I, I a, is there wrong. a target uh like have they expressed a, a specific goal um they, there's no specific goal it's not like we have to get the the coin to a specific price before they're released i don't know what their goal is like you mentioned before okay, that was, um, I was wondering. And, and, like like you mentioned before uh they're just like fpga and other asic manufacturers have done in the past they typically build their bag and then they release right um at this point you know, like I said, before they, they came on, there was about 50% of the coin mined. They've acquired at this point about 5 to 6%. So they still own less than 10% of all the coin in circulation. Um, this is not going to go on forever. And uh, those machines will be released. So I think one day, you know, we'll look back at this and, and go, what an interesting time in the evolution of the project. But um, it's uh, it's definitely not anything I ever planned for or to deal with. Uh, but um, like I said, there's only certain things that, that I and others can control. And uh, we just try and focus on that so that we can make the project successful and all of these things happen in time. Internally, after this was discovered, was there any discussion of an algo change? Um, yes, yes. And we actually have backup algos in case we need it. I mean, uh, to the point where like we've talked shop um so that we know that things would work and uh yes i mean you should always have contingency plans um there was also uh some some fights and consternation um, one of my good buddies shard uh basically left moderation and he hasn't left the project he, he's still around and um but doesn't agree with uh you know the the majority um that that said, you know, let it roll. And uh, I, I will never fault him for that. And I, I appreciate him and, and everything he's ever done and, and any other project he's on, you know, I'll always uh, keep an eye on it. And as far as just a f fully hypothetical, let's say their economic goal is to control over 50% of the volume, where the, will there be another discussion at that point that says it's clear that they're going to be able to control the price and manipulate it because of the volume control that they have. Um, when you say fifty percent of the volume, you mean like them require over fifty percent of the coins, or do you? Yeah, mean like if their economic goal, because it 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 doesn't sound like we understand what their economic goal is, uh, it, other than to make money. I'm saying like clearly there's a goal post there where they say, okay, we've made enough. Now we're going to sell them. If that goal is to control the total supply of the coin, or over fifty percent of the total supply of the coin. Does that raise a concern for anybody? I mean, even if they mined continuously for the next two years, they would only acquire 25% max if they acquired at 100% over the next two years. There's no way they could acquire 50% unless GPU miners previously sell their bags to them and they buy it. Mm -hmm. 
So, but I mean, we could see a, a position. I mean, if I, if I'm thinking about this objectively and I take a step, step back and I, and I look at like, well, what is the uh, incentive for other manufacturers to hop on Radian if there ends up not being one and this is the only entity and it just runs forever and they don't feel like they've met their goal? Like, I suppose my, my question at the end of the day, let's just make it really simple. Is there any, um, is there any situations in which uh, the Radiant team would decide to fork to another hashing algorithm? Um, I believe for uh, security concerns would be the... But how the is this not a security concern? Um, okay, so if they violated the protocol. Okay, let me say it that way. If they yeah, violated this, the protocol rules. Which they could do if they, they wanted to. They, they have the power, but they also own the biggest bag to lose. Yeah, but... That, you, that's, but that's the power of, of Bitcoin. It's powered by greed, literally. You I, know, under, you, I understand you, that. You, you become, even if you're an attacker, you become a holder. And um, I I agree with you and I understand, you know, the, the fear and uncertainty and doubt that surrounds the situation. So... Uh, it's not it's not ideal, as I have said before. We we don't um, like that, but there I can tell you as well from looking at the machines that they're running and when they turn on and off and the numbers on the machines, they are cycling through stuff. So um, if you know anything, you you know a lot about hardware manufacturing of these things, and uh, so I don't think that they are holding still. And there have also been other um miners that have popped on that have machines that are producing 500 you know giga hash and that's uh, that's definitely not a gpu on there so are other people testing machines you or i can't say that they aren't but we can't say that they are either so yes so th this is you, a this is a uncertain time i agree with that when you say cycling you mean that your your assumption is that the, is that they're mining things other than radiant no, um, their machine, um, they, they have machines that turn on and off. There are different machines of different hash rates and uh, the machine names will change. So unless they're just changing their machine names for the, the, the heck of it, they are testing equipment, basically. Ad additional hardware. Okay. Addis additional maybe product SKUs within the line of... Asics. There, there, there are definitely lower powered ones and there are definitely higher powered ones. Right. But even more than that, you will see the worker names for those change periodically. So believe me, we are keeping a very close eye on it and um, and seeing where this goes. And I'll continue to be in communication with them. Um, but it's not like we you know, say good morning to each other or anything like that. Um, it's it's a. Uh, um, a frenemy situation <laughs> at, the, at the moment, I guess, would be the best way. It's in both of our uh, incentives to um, to work together to make well, Radiant successful. So, uh, you know, I'm going to continue with that until I see a protocol rule violated. I would, I would think, at least if I if I'm also taking all things into account, that um, there would be risk with such a ba large bag holder controlling the hashing uh, right now that if you did switch algorithms, the risk would be that they would dump the, the coin. And that would be something that was taken into consideration when making this decision. I mean, yes, all factors are definitely in, in consideration, but yes, that, that's an obvious one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. But, so but but honestly, if they want to dump coins below mining costs, I would take them. So, you know, that goes for anyone, so really. So let's uh, be done with the elephant in the room. I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, I don't think I ever will be, but that's okay. What I do like that's been going on at Radiant. So I usually have every project, I have things I like and I don't like. It just is the way it is. Um, but one of the things I really like that's going on is the glyphs. Um, and primarily because it does leverage GPUs, which gives GPU miners something to do. It also creates a base value for the, uh, you know, the token system on Radiant 
by utilizing some sort of power, which is going to give some sort of value to whatever it's working on. Plus there's the added bonus value of everything based off of the photon. So tell me about glyphs and um, how that's been going and where you see it headed in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you don't mind, just like last end cap on the entity thing, you know, I'll say once again that we want machines released as soon as possible. I will continue pushing that as much as I can with any and every manufacturer out there. If there are any um, protocol violations, then they will be dealt with. Um, but we are also looking for a long term cooperative relationship as much as there can be um, with, uh, you know, growing not just Radiant but into the larger ecosystem. And you can't deny that some of these companies um, are um, much bigger than some of the projects that they they deal with. So um, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, FUD, but there's also a lot of opportunity if uh, dealt with the right way. So, you know, once again, we want the machines as soon as possible and uh, we'll continue pushing for that. And I hope that it, it does come soon. Um, but as you mentioned with glyphs, we've always had the vision that there's a place for both ASICs and GPUs in Radiant. And the mineable tokens um, with GPUs, glyphs, um, also known as RxD20, uh, because that that is, I guess, the fungible token standard, but it also is NFTs. It also is containers and um I guess uh, you know, user profiles, if you want to put it that way. Um it's there's also another aspect that will be coming in the future uh, that's kind of a project named WAVE right now, which is um, DNS. So, you know, being able to um, have uh, your websites and other things uh, registered through um, Radiant in the WAVE protocol. Uh, like I had mentioned, going into um, being able to have Radiant be a layer two through um, contracts that link with Bitcoin. So very much like lightning actually is, is the idea behind it. So um, locking tokens and having commits and you, you know, can unlock once uh, you have one side sign, you know, for the other. So, I mean, th these are, you know, quite basic things, but it, you have to get it just right to make all this stuff work. So we've been working on it for a long time. And um, this Glyphs is just the beginning. And right now we have fixed difficulty for mining the glyphs as just like your goat token. Uh, I've loved some of your videos seeing um, you did have the glyph miner on that screen behind you back there. I've noticed that in a few of your videos. Um, I'm mining goat on uh, one of my PCs downstairs right now. So, uh, you know, I, I love love all of the projects that have come up. There's some really interesting ones and I can't wait to see what people do with it. Um, we have another project, uh, Radmello Racer, which is going to be the first um, game uh, that's available, first Web3 kind of game um, uh, with uh, Radiant. And uh, they have some really interesting ideas that are gonna come out um, that with breeding and other things like that, that I'm excited to see. We have a couple markets that are in the works, uh, Radiant Exchange, and radiant market um, that are being in literally in the works right now um, don't know eta exactly and not going to put the pressure on those devs but i expect them within the next you know i'll say a couple months definitely and um it's there, there's a lot of excitement around this I, i'm really um I, i'm mining on multiple computers right now uh, glyphs and in, you know, on a couple of them, I have multiple uh, browser tabs open, mining different things, splitting the hash rate on my GPUs. And like you said, you know, it's provably fair, distributed proof of work um, token generation, and um, you can see whether it was pre-mined or not. And uh, there also something else that that should be coming out shortly is um, difficulty, uh, variable difficulty. Um, for tokens. So like yours is a fixed difficulty. It'll mine out kind of first come first serve as quickly as, as many people jump onto it. Um, some of them mine out very quickly. Some of them take a little while longer. Of course, that depends a little bit on the difficulty, but also depends on the number of machines that are working on those, mm -hmm. those tokens. Um, but just like Bitcoin with difficulty adjustments, um, we will have uh, that coming to tokens soon. 
as well. And there's a web browser. So right now, um, as you know, and you've done some awesome videos on it, there's the Glyph Miner um, and the Photonic Wallet, but there also will soon be a browser extension that supports Glyph as well. So we'll have another wallet um, that will support them. And we expect uh, other wallets to support Glyph in the future as well um, with an Electromex update that is also in the works currently and uh, should be released soon that will allow for much easier indexing of uh, not just Radiant, but, but all of these glyphs and other things that we're talking about. So I hope eventually that I'll be able to store my GOAT with my Radiant on you know my Tangem wallet and in you know Electron and everywhere else that you can store your coins. Nice, yeah, and that's something that's important to mention to everybody that I've been trying to push through is make sure you just kind of create a brand new Photonic wallet when participating right now, at least until... Um, there's more widespread adoption uh, wallet-wise. I think the big thing there is, at least my understanding, is there is potential for losing the tokens if it is connected to something like an Electrum wallet that doesn't know about the tokens, right? Yes, and like I said, that update should come soon, so that will will not be a worry um, in the in the future. Um, but uh, actually, I did some more research. Um, I don't know if we want to call it out here, but you had sent some of your goat tokens, I believe, to a, a non-supported wallet, and we were worried. You know, did that cause any problems with it? Um, I don't know if you've tried it, but I would recommend you try sending that back to Photonic, and all of your tokens should be there. The only way that you would lose any of the, the data that's tied to those photons is if they were spent as fees in the transaction. Which right, if it comes through as fees. No, I didn't yeah. actually lose anything. I just saw the um, disparity between what photonic was showing and what electrum uh the electrum wallet was showing i had all i had done was recover the electrum wallet to photonic which generated a brand new address um but obviously didn't have all of the radiant that was in the electrum wallet showing up in it and then that's when we got kind of into the discussion of what could happen. Right. So, um, gotcha. yeah, yeah, I didn't lose anything, but I saw the potential for losing it. And then, then that's kind of when I reached out cause I was like, hold on, what's going on here? Um, yeah, I, just and, zero I, balance. I, I had forgot the particulars of that, but with that being said, you know, everything is still on chain. If you have your, your private key and, and your words, you are safe. It's just a matter of recovering them um, where they are. And with updates, like we're talking about, this should be a, an, a funny issue when we look at this in the future. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think the, as far as um, layer two solutions, token systems, go here recently i think you guys had the smoothest launch we did see a, a huge uptick in activity on the chain uh, as soon uh, a little bit after it was launched uh, how how much activity increase was there i did see quite a bit uh, is that something you know specifics of yeah, um, I mean, it's. Uh, I was just looking last night, and I think we've processed over the last 30 days almost a million transactions, um, considering that uh, we had only processed a little under 2 million in over two years of the chain being around. Um, you know, we've uh, definitely done um, a humongous increase, and in, in even transactions per second and things like that, they're all if not a vertical line, they are definitely a, a line going up in all um, cases. So it's increased transaction volume incredibly. Um, but even more than that, you know, people are using Radiant finally for something beyond just peer to peer value transfer, which of course is incredibly important and, you know, a, a mainstay of, of any of these projects. But um, it's also providing other value through the tokenization of these. Um, these items and then seeing what people create, uh, communities that spring up around some of these other projects that are being created, just like we've seen on Solana and other chains, how, you know, these these meme coins and whatnot can, you know, take a life of their own. I'm excited to see um, what happens with that, you know, GOAT and everything else, you know, see where that goes. Um, and, and then there will also be projects that are value add. Um, this 
long term, you know, these are fun things, you know, and NFTs, you know, will be fun and and people will, will trade them and everything else. But I'll be really excited when these are tickets to, you know, whatever a movie or a concert. Um, I, for the longest time, um, some of my friends will probably laugh at me saying this, have, have said, you know, I, I will consider us one when we can take down Ticketmaster because we have an NFT, a, and it's even want to say NFT, a, a digital token, which is your ticket to a concert that you buy from the artist who's working with the venue, and they get to keep the vast majority of the money versus a Ticketmaster or Live Nation that takes a huge cut of funds from the artist. And you end up getting either a paper ticket or a digital ticket in their app that means nothing, has no redeemable value like old paper tickets had back in the day. You can't even keep it around or anything. These should be dynamic. They should have links to the artist's Discord and Twitter and communities, and it should have links to their merchandising. So that way you can easily participate and get these things. It gives them value add. And you know, then they can also add in other things that give the community more value with it as well. I think we're just touching the tip of the iceberg with what can be done with some of this technology and, and truly what tokenization can do, because a token is just a piece of information. The ticket master is using a token when you buy a ticket there. But these are dumb tokens that have very little value add, and they're absorbing a lot of the value with a legacy system. And really, the, the purpose of blockchain in, in in my view is to democratize that um very much like the purpose of the internet and it originally was to do that and we've seen you know there have been large companies that have absorbed most of that value but there still is value that even you know you and i can come over here and have this conversation in the corner of the internet and and push what we find to be useful so um, i see the potential to be far beyond just you know basic tokens and nfts and other things like that um especially as it breaks into you know the larger economy and then you talk about tokenization of stocks and DeFi and all these other things um that's easy to imagine it's the stuff that's hard to imagine that really excites me yeah and i think that's all of these things have been discussed i think across most of the ecosystem surrounding blockchain for quite some time i think the big thing from the uh, mining perspective, security perspective, in particular, there's an importance to activity on the chain to drive fees up to a sustainable level to maintain security post emissions, right? Um, Absolutely. And yep. I think that that's something that a lot, I think, uh, frankly, I think that that got missed by the CASPA team. Um, because of their fast emissions, I'm not so sure that they can get there yet. Um, but I think that that also, though, still, it's like this, there's these competing interests that is very difficult to balance, which is going to be the security budget for the miners versus the uh, the value and the the uh, cost for the consumer, right? So, however much they're paying to participate within the network and fees, and and I'm not so sure that that balance has been figured out quite yet by anyone. I actually feel like it it hasn't, even though we were kind of promised that with proof of stake from Ethereum. It doesn't. Seem seem like um that has happened yeah no that they're they're inflating because they don't have enough transactions and their their new coin um is greater than the coins being burned in fees so they actually have an inflationary thing when they thought it would be deflationary mm -hmm. um i would also add um it, to that trilemma of issue the, the dual issues you mentioned there i would add a third one um which is as you create those ballooning transactions and the usage, you get a larger chain that then becomes harder to, you know, some would say store. Data storage is actually incredibly cheap, though, and will only get cheaper with time. So to me, that's not a huge issue. Um, also, Radiant is designed to have kind of a, a sharded node system. So you'll have archive nodes. You can have miners that keep just a, a, um, a pruned uh, yeah. hash structure so they can just focus on the mining. And then you'll have um, agent nodes. And agent nodes would be the, you know, the phone at the ticket counter that 
that scans your QR Just, uh, code and, and sees that you have that token and you own it. But the only way that you can actually prove that you own that token and it's not a, a duplicate of some kind is that you have to be able to see the transaction and the genesis of it. And um, that's where that back to genesis problem becomes an issue. Solana right now, if you try and go find a token and it's its original you know, transaction, you're going to have a hard time. You can just go look on Twitter and people trying to do this um, because even at their current state, they're having indexing problems. And as any um, blockchain grows, indexing becomes a huge issue. So it might seem mundane, but it's part of that bigger vision of you have to create the increased transactions. You have to create have a security budget. Um, you know, post uh, you know multiple halvings or you know what your, whatever your emission schedule is. And like I said, we have a long tail of emissions. So with Radiant, it's it's definitely down the line. But um, you want to be there sooner rather than later. And also, as you scale, you want it to not break down. You want it to still be usable because if it's not usable as you mm -hmm. scale, it's worthless in my opinion. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how some of these play out. And I, the and from my point of view, the, the only chain that's really uh pulled off any fees being relevant at all in a proof of work scenario was Ethereum. Um, other than maybe Bitcoin for like maybe 24 to 48 hours during uh, the runes phase. Um, <laughs> the the having. <laughs> right. The having combined with rune launch. And that was pretty much it only lasted maybe like 48 hours tops um, where you saw, you know, fees meet parity, uh, which means, I mean, good news for, people that have been paying attention at least we have a few more having cycles probably to go before we really have to start adjusting uh economic strategies uh, from a mining perspective but I, I mean i think they've already said though the writing's on the wall they want fees to go so high that it prices most people out of using bitcoin you know btc and that's not good for people who do want to use it as a store of value and then a transaction mechanism right. because they'll be paying in well, exorbitant fees to transact anything. So you'll never use it for any small value purchase at all. And that's where, like I said before, I, I see Radiance as having tremendous value as being that layer two that allows that to happen. Yeah, I've never had an issue with their, the idea of multiple projects fulfilling individual roles, right? Because um, you can't please all aspects of finance with a single project. I just, I don't think you can, right? I, I think that you need multiple options there. Plus, you don't know which ones are going to take off and actually be successful either. So I think it, a lot of it's experimentation that has to be done. Um I'm excited for glyphs. I think that they're headed in the in a really interesting direction. Obviously, I, I'm biased towards anything I can do with GPUs, so I really like that. Um, I had a question as far as the uh, the intention. I know in chat we you had mentioned like the restriction, like there being some sort of restriction to amount of GPUs per system. Is that something that's been actually talked about uh, internally with uh, Radiant developers and, or, and the developers at, at the Radiant Marketplace and all that? Or, or is that just an idea you have? Um, no, I mean, as far as like a uh, number of GPUs that can mine, um, I mean, right now, as you know, um, it's... It, you know, uh, use web GPU to do mm -hmm. the mining. Yeah. Um, I have heard rumor, not spoken with him directly about it, that IE doc was working on this. So that way it could mm -hmm. be used with multiple GPUs. I have nothing against doing that. In fact, I encourage anyone and everyone to work on what they feel is valuable to add to the ecosystem. Um, I have no um, connection except for, for maybe, you know, knowing the people that are working on Radiant Market. And um, that's why I don't know necessarily their, their timetable or Radiant Exchange um, or how they're going to build it out. Uh, even, um, you know, Rad Mello and, um, and other people that are working on other projects, uh, 
I'll have little conversations with them about how they're doing. And I'll find sometimes the decisions they're making to be incredibly interesting. Maybe not the ones that I would make off the top of my head, but um, it really excites me to see that experimentation because that's what it should be in a distributed system. No one should control it top down. If anyone ever gets on stage and says they're CEO, you know, it's not a distributed system. That just, you know, it should be a tell right there. Um, so to me, like I, I've said, this is um, an exciting experiment. And it brings me back to those early days of Bitcoin when people could take a chance. They could try different things and weren't locked in as as much as it, as it currently is, um, where sometimes if you experiment, it's seen as a bad thing. And, and I would encourage everyone, if you're interested, to go and experiment. Um, I'm really excited about uh, a lot of people that have actually recently joined the community um, that that have just jumped right in and challenged and said, hey, I don't like this or I want to fix this or whatever it may be. And we're like, go right ahead, you know, do your thing. We want to see it. Um, that website that popped up today that mm -hmm. I recommended, uh, radiantblockchain.xyz, I had, I had no contact with the person that created it. I, you know, they just created what I think is an amazing representation of our project. And that's their individual proof of work. And I congratulate them for it. And I'll do my part then to spread their work. Uh, that's, that's, I think, the value I can help add to the, to the ecosystem. Yeah, I've talked to IE Doc uh, specifically about it. I know he's in the GOAT Discord. I'll leave the link to that, too, in the description for everybody that's interested Um He's already talked in there. I think he's on vacation right now. So when he gets back, the, oh, yeah, 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 he's on vacation. Yeah, yeah the big that. question I've had going around here recently uh, has been, you know, when does the DeFi listing pop open? I know you said you weren't really clear on that because you didn't talk to the Radiant Marketplace. Do you have any idea on when that may be? I had heard the 27th, which as of today will be tomorrow, but this should come out on Wednesday. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, actually, today's the 28th, so it, it oh, would have passed. Yeah, it, yeah, it would have passed. It's all good, it would have passed uh, yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I, I have not had direct contact with them, but I have seen, um, through uh, someone else that uh, has that their developers were on vacation as well, like IE Doc, and uh, so they're a little bit behind, but they are continuing to work on it. And so hopefully within the next week or two, we see something. But once again, no promises. That's why, or, you know, I, earlier I said, you know, within the next month or two, we, we should definitely have that. I'm giving them some runway so that way they can surprise and delight us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so we missed it. I, I thought we were missing it or missed it. So anyways. Uh, at this yeah, point, that, that's, that's why I, I try and steer clear of hard targets, especially with devs, because you never want to rush something that needs to be well done from the get-go especially when dealing with finance or things like this and anything that deals with ownership of any kind yeah no i agree i just kind of curious get get that question asked because it will be asked and uh we gotta, <laughs> gotta make <laughs> sure i ask it hey um, i'm excited myself i mean i i have a humongous wallet full of, of glyphs that i'd mind you know not that yeah. i plan on, on selling any of them but just to see what people do with it and how it evolves that's once again you know what really yeah i'm wondering how the how the how it's going to influence the amount of transactions on radiant um i'm interested in kind of what the value proposition there's going to be as well for everyone involved whether that be a gpu mentor or a liquidity provider um all or of those things or content right? creators right, right. or content I mean, creators Who's going to be creating tokens? You know, will we get yeah. Iggy Azalea and whoever else jumping over here because it's cheap and easy to create and uh, more, it truly is more decentralized because it's not all pre minted, you know, like like we see on, on other things, you know, with wallets that buy up the whole supply and are linked. Well, that's one that. thing. I think it was a good direction because that is one thing that if we look at Tawn, uh, and then obviously more recently, Graham really launched on top of Ton with the same um, kind of idea. Those have, those two have been extremely successful thanks to that, even in the bear market, right? Thanks to that initial value proposition from minting with GPUs. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, there is a floor value because the every single glyph uh, token is burnable, not just to reduce supply, but you get back the photon, mm-hmm. um, the stat, if you want to think of it that way. If photons are confusing. They're exactly the same thing as sats in Bitcoin. Um, and uh, so so you are going to get back that individual um you know, a uh, unit of account, no matter what. So that there is definitely a floor. It can never truly go to zero, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Or if it ever does, you should buy up the whole supply and just burn it. And then you've got radiant that you can go use. So, you know, there, there definitely is a, a value in that. But I think beyond that will be what is very interesting as well. I mean, is there any risk there that because you can mint on radiant without minting through gpus right you can just kind of mint an entire project out is there any uh, danger to the value of photons if people start over minting and that sort of thing no i mean when it first came out i minted 21 million btc that's in my wallet and i haven't moved any you know but i mean there could be a thousand btcs created by different people it's more i think about than the the project behind those things, you know, will it become a, a Pepe or, or, you know, one of those celebrity led ones that actually gets traction? Will it be part of a community? And it's used as part of uh, getting into a discord or you know, different things like that. Um, Rad Mello is going to use it where if you have a minimum um, number of their tokens, you are whitelisted to get their NFTs, which are used in the game. And then I believe also will deal with the breeding. Those types of ideas are very exciting to me of what people will do with them. I guess my question should be reframed to get the answer that I want. Is there a cap to the amount of photons? Uh, I mean, there's a hundred million photons in um, a radiant uh, and, you know, it's capped by as much radiant as you want to put into token creation. So, uh, you know, 21 billion times a hundred million is the cap at full supply, but right now we're only at 11 billion or so. So as okay. much as you can get your hands on times a hundred million, um, yeah. Individual. Yeah. Units Thanks. In so that's what I was trying to get where that, where that floor value would, could be theoretically derived from, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, more, more than enough for every person on earth to have, um, I guess, hundreds of thousands of them at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> that that answers that question. Well, thanks for coming on, Art. I know it's uh, it's a, I knew it was going to be an uncomfortable conversation. I appreciate that you still came on. Um, and I uh, am also happy to, you know, hear your point of view and let everybody else hear it. And so uh, big thanks to you for for doing that. I respect you a lot for that. Um, At some point, if I could talk to a developer or something too, just let me know. That would be really cool as well. And uh, I don't know what the topics will be at that time. Um, I am genuinely invested in the future of Radiant. So don't get me wrong. I, I know I rub people wrong a lot because I'm very vocal about what I, you know, what I think fundamentally and, uh, uh, that is what is going to be what it is. That's just the way, the kind of person I am. Um, and I want to make sure that my, my audience knows that I'm being true to what I actually believe in. So I, I think that's part of the reason it comes from there. And, but I do understand that it can be like, not very fun to come talk about these types of things, you know? So I appreciate it a lot. And, uh, I hope you have a good week too. Get out, get out of here, puppy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate you uh, for bringing me on and, and don't worry. Um, I, I got a, a lashing after the announcement uh, with the entity from many people. And I'm sure this will not be the, the last uh, hard interview I get on this subject. Um, but I, I appreciate that because no one should not be challenged. It makes us stronger. It makes us stand by our convictions if you, if you have them. And uh, I, um, I'm really excited to see the future of Radiant. And I think in in the long run, we'll look back at this and kind of laugh and hopefully see it as an amazing opportunity for those that took it. So, um, you know, 
Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for your your interest and passion in glyphs, because with the A6 coming online, you could have just uh, wrote off the project. But I think once you saw, you know, how awesome the glyphs are and that we had, you know, a, really a seamless launch with it, that, uh, you know, I appreciate the the work that you've done in that as well. And uh, don't, yeah, don't ever stop challenging uh, me and other people. And, and I'll say I don't speak completely for the whole project. You know, all of these opinions are, are mine, you know, personal. Um, I do not choose or make the direction of Radiant. We do. And mm -hmm. so, so you pushing back and, and other people, it's, uh, I couldn't do it by myself. I do not control this by myself and uh, no one ever should. I don't ever want a CEO of Radiant. I, I view myself and, and other people that have worked a long time as, as if anything, just maintainers of the protocol. So that way we can all work on it, create on it and grow something that is, is truly amazing. I think. Awesome. Can you tell everybody, um, where they can find you one more time before we head out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm at the art of Satoshi um, on Twitter. Uh, definitely recommend that you join uh, the Radiant Blockchain Discord. Uh, we also have a Reddit community, and of course, all the the other you know different socials and everything. Um, 